Right, I was about to start some more work on the automatic ANS simulator, which I've got here, and I realised I've been using breadboards for quite a number of years now, and I've learned quite a number of tips and tricks that I thought I would share with you, so um, let's go through them. Okay, so behind me then, great big massive breadboard. In reality, they're that kind of size. Now, these are stacked together. There's, there's two breadboards stacked together. Um, there are little clips there, look, and they, they slide in. Um, so what happens is this uh, is a power rail at the top here, and you've got the same down the bottom. So the blue line indicates that you would connect that to ground normally. You don't have to, but uh, it would help because it indicates that it's your negative or your ground rail. And then the red line indicates that that would be your positive supply from your positive rail, okay? So that might be a battery connection, it might be a power supply connection or whatever you're using. Um, and then you've got the same here, it's, it's kind of mirrored. This, this gap in the middle um, that tells you that there's a complete separation from this side to this side. There's no connectivity, okay? Um, there's connectivity all the way through here on the blue line and the red. Although many breadboards, they separate there in the middle for some strange reason. Um, so that, that would not, this pin doesn't connect to that and this doesn't connect to that and similarly the same down here, okay? And then in the main area here, these connect in the vertical plane, not in horizontal, in a vertical plane. So if you imagine that you can sort of see through this uh, breadboard slightly, what you might see is something like that. So there's a the metal strip that runs all the way through here, but bear in mind, there might be a gap in the middle there. I've um, come unstuck with that a few times. And then vertically, these connect this way, all right? So let's have a look on the bench and um, we'll look at a few devices I've used over the years um, and some things that don't work, okay? Let's have a look at them now. Right, here's a breadboard. Um, as I said, there are various types. This is kind of standard breadboard. You can see this is two of these um, mounted in a, in a base and it gives you some banana jack connectors. They don't actually physically connect in. You have to add your own wires, which I don't really like. Uh, it would be nice if somehow they were linked underneath. Um, so you get this type. Um, here's two mounted together. Um, there's another one, smaller form factor one, even smaller form factor one. Okay. Um, but sometimes I find that Putting devices into these pins, it doesn't easily insert or make good contacts. It depends on the quality of the of the boards. And by far the best that I ever purchased was this one. It's a K K and H. Um, got a few things from K and H, and uh, I've I've looked around to try and get another one of these. I found them, but they are incredibly expensive. Um, if anyone knows where I can get this board from at a reasonable price, I will certainly buy another one. Um, this one's okay, but like I say, the, the connections into the board are not always easy. Sometimes it gets stuck. It must be the how the, uh, the spring-loaded metal plates underneath are manufactured. Okay. Now, tip number one, I guess is your power connectors. So how do you get power to this board? It might be a battery, it might be a power supply. Um, and over the years I tried all various things, but I found that these little um, through hole terminal blocks work absolutely brilliantly. So I realized that you got, you got two pins there and when you push those in on the breadboard, they are really secure, nice and tight and they can go onto your power rail like that, okay? So what I did was I made up my own power lead. This is coming from my bench power supply, and um, it's just a bit of mains flex. Uh, what is it, one millimeter mains flex? Of course, you're not, you don't need that kind of, um, 
that kind of size cabling gauge, but um, that's what I had, and it's nice and flexible. And yeah, so you'd connect your negative onto your negative rail and your positive onto your positive rail, and that's a nice solid connection look. Um, because it's flex, I had a ground lead, so I've connected that to the ground, uh, sorry, the blue one. So I've got another little uh, crocodile clip which comes in handy if I want um, a ground reference to something and I put another little tail there that I, I clip certain devices onto when I want to measure. Um, and of course you could put another lead on the positive there. All right, so that's tip number one. Tip number two, when you're wiring LEDs or right, various other items for that matter, you need current limiting resistors, don't you? So I'm forever wiring LEDs, and quite often, you, I don't know, I might have 10, might have 20 of them, but to wire up another 10 or 20 current limiting resistors as well was a bit of a pain. So um, let's just put this LED in here. And there we go. But the tip really is, get yourself some resistor packs. These are resistor packs. So, um, Let's pick, we got 470 ohms, 1 kilo ohm, 4.7K, 10K, and 47K. So if I pick this 1K here, what happens is one of the pins is ground, and then there's effectively a 1K resistor to pin the next pin, and a 1K resistor to the next, and a 1K resistor to the next. Now, let's see where the, the ground is. It's there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, that little dot there, that represents the ground pin, okay? And all the others are 1K linked to that. So if I insert that there, there you go, that LEDs come on, all right? And then I can just carry on up to eight LEDs, and when I want another one, I just put another, another resistor pack rather than another eight resistors there. Okay, that's tip number two. Tip number three, get yourself an organiser for your jumper wires. Um, let's just move that out of the way. This is mine, I've got several of these little boxes, I can't remember where I got them from, I think Maplin when they were around. And I've even labelled it up to say wire. Um, but it, what it does is it enables you to organise into the various lengths of cables. So whatever length you need, then um, you don't have, you're not hunting around inside a great big mess of cables. And you can see I've got other stuff in here. Here's, here's some header pins, they're worth having. Um, these you solder on to uh, microcontroller boards. Um, and then, yeah, there's my terminal blocks as well. All right, but um, yeah, get those organized so it's nice and easy to find the kind of length that you need, okay? Right, tip number four, leading on from jumper wires and keeping them nice and tidy. Um, a even better option is to get yourself one of these types of kit. These are jumper wires, but a different type. They are kind of solid jumper wires. So if I just uh, move that out of the way for a second and pick one of these, um, you can see I can tidy this up a lot nicer. As an example, let's get rid of this power lead here, supply lead, and just put in the right length here. These are designed to go the appropriate length of um, these um, through holes here, and there you go, it's, it's much neater. I'm not gonna catch my finger when I move around the breadboard, all right? And again, leading on from jumper wire conversation, this is a brilliant kit. I bought, um, I bought a similar one, actually. Uh, this one, it looks like it's exactly the same thing, but you can see I bought this from Maplin when, when they were around. And then I used all of them up because I, um, yeah, I used them for soldering into permanent boards as well, actually. And then I managed to find another one from RS. However, they don't do it anymore. And I then thought, well, let's try from Amazon. And I bought this kit. Um, and I guess the tip here is don't always trust um, what you're gonna get. This is, I'm very disappointed. It, it, looked, it looked to be the same thing, but these are so flimsy. Um, they are just, they just fold. And when you try and push that into the board, it just bends, it does, it, it, you can't put the force on, okay? So try and use products that you know or brands that you know 
but I guess it is trial and error at the end of the day. I know not to buy this again. And um, you can see the name on there. Uh, just be careful. I bought other stuff from this company, Bojack, on Amazon, and it's been absolutely fine. So I thought it'd be okay. But in this instance, not at all. So that's going in the bin. Right, tip number six, uh, kind of related to this LED here and this resistor pack. Um, it's, I, I was doing that so often as well that I thought actually it'd be nice to have a little board to plug in that had it all done for me. So you can make your own. So uh, there's one there. This, this is the ANS um, simulator that I've been uh, showing. So there you go, I've got eight LEDs, resistor pack there, and it's all wired through with header pins. Let me just take that out, it's a bit stiff. There you go, and I've just soldered it up underneath. Reasonably neat, I think. Um, so that, that goes onto my breadboard, and that goes into the ground, so I just put power there. Um, yeah, it makes the whole thing a lot easier, and I'm not spending my time doing that when I want to get on with whatever project I'm trying to play around with, okay? Tip number seven, push buttons. Um, I've tried all kinds of push buttons. Uh, this type here, uh, you can see there, um, worked perfectly for me. Um, I've, what I've found with other push buttons is getting them to stay in the breadboard, because of course you're, you're touching and, and pressing on these things, they, they were bouncing out. They didn't have enough length on the legs there to stay in the board properly and uh, you're getting all kinds of faults and errors that just wasted time. So these sit in nicely like that. You put them horizontally, of course, not vertically because these pins are all short, shorted together anyway. So you'd put it like that. There you go, sits there. Nice, all right? And then conveniently, it comes with a few colored caps. So when you're experimenting, you, you remember red does something and green does something and black does something else. And they work absolutely brilliant, all right? Right, tip number eight, these things. Uh, these are little resistor selection boards and they're, they're brilliant. So when you're experimenting around and you want, you're, you're trying to play around with resistor values, rather than hunting through a whole stack of resistors that you might have in a pot somewhere, this is kind of a pro programmable resistor selection. So um, you probably can't see it on the camera. Maybe you can, bit out of focus, but this is your one ohm range, your 10 ohm range, 100 ohm, one kilo ohm, 10 kilo ohm, 100 kilo ohm, and one mega ohm. So if I wanted, um, for example, I don't know, let's say 150, now let's say um, 1.2 kilo ohms. Um, so there's my kilo ohms there. So I'd put that onto one, okay? And this is the 100 ohm range. So I'd put that onto two there. So that's now configured as 1.2 kilo ohms. And that's what I would get from those two pins there. So if I connected it from, say, that switch there, I now know I've got a 1.2 kilo ohm resistance between those two pins. And I've got a couple of them because I use these quite a lot for checking voltage divider circuits. So get working out my value for a voltage divider. And then you can just verify that with your meter, play around to your heart's content to get the right value. Yeah, okay, that's... Uh, Tip number eight. Right, tip number nine relates to these things here. I don't use these to power the board. I think that's what they are kind of intended for. But uh, I actually use them for my for my multimeter connections. Only, only this one, the ground connection. Um, so I do tend to have that connected through to ground most times. So I'll bring my meter in and uh, put it onto volts. There you go. And what I have here is a male to male banana plug, okay? So that will connect into there. Now my meter is tied to ground on this board. Then if I bring in my, um, my red probe there and connect to say there, there you go. You can see I'm driving this, this board at what, eight point? It should be nine volts, but yeah, 8.7 volts, okay? And um, these are great these are great probes, by the way. These are made by a probe master. I've done a video on this before. 
Um, nice pointy tip, you can actually insert these into the breadboard and it does make good contact fairly easily. All right, And even better still, um, you get all kinds of little devices like this which thread on. So there you go, and then I could clip on directly, uh, sorry, a little bit fiddly, directly to that LED. <laughs> My eyes are not good. That LED there, there you go, look. Now I'm getting 9.4, there you go. Um, so that's probably tip number 9A, I guess. Anyway, next one. Okay, finally then, tip number 10 is keep your stuff organized and labeled. So I use some boxes like this. I've got all kinds of plastic boxes around. These are resistors up to 59K and you can see inside, uh, just there, look, you can see inside, they're all labeled with the kind of value range. Um, I've got some transistors there. Uh, sorry, yeah, all transistors there and um, all various IC components, all labelled. I know exactly where to find them, and I'm not hunting around through great big pot to uh, find what I'm after, and um, makes it a lot more pleasurable make doing projects. Okay, I hope that helps. Uh, catch you later.